Okay, shalom. Right, this is an incredible, incredible teaching. Regarding this concept of Moshe and Yeshua united, within this framework, what we're looking at, this concept of face-to-face, -face, but this is just taking it to a whole other level. How mad is his appearance? Let's go and have a look where we're getting all this from. So... We've looked at these in previous lessons and I've pulled up that this concept from within Arizal's teachings. Now, all my teachings were based on um, inspiration that I got from Arizal's teaching on Ve'ath Hanan, the final appearance of Moshe as Mashiach. Okay. And some of the words that he uses, like this word desolation to describe Moshe in a state before he's taught by Eliyahu on a V. Um, <clears throat> things like that, that word comes to, it's exactly the same as Yeshua. I've pointed this out many, many times. Okay, but the word that he uses to describe Moshe is this one, Shamamu, taken from Isaiah 52, 14. Okay. And this has got an ordinal value of 490, not one. The entire verse, how many wondered about you, how mad is his appearance, is from that of a man. And his features from that of people. Right, so it's this 491. The reason we're going to do a drill down is because it's so significant. It's incredible, incredible gematria that relates to a revelation of Mashiach ben Yosef in this one number. And obviously we can see it's significant because one... Um, Arizal pointed it out and we've got this incredible word here in it that warrants lots of investigation um, but there's just some incredible gematria in this here the 491 so let's go and have a look let's go and have a look at this so we've got the verse first of all I'd like to point out that this verse from Isaiah 52 14 comes to 340 3470 plus 491 together they come to 3961 which is 17 times 233 this is a very significant number when it comes to revealing Mashiach ben Yosef and this number also Tov um, you know so we've got an in inter inclusion with all these concepts that are related to this 233 and the fact that it's good it is a good thing what Yote Vave has done regards the concept of Mashiach ben Yosef Okay, and he's suffering with us. And the fact that his appearance is mad to such a degree. This is the work that we've got to do to decode and reveal from this concealment that yod Father himself has created. We've got to reveal the good. Okay, which is the name yod Father. We've got to transform this concealment into a revelation. Okay, so... This is how it links to the concept of face-to-face. -face. This is one of the ways that it links to the concept of face-to-face. -face. There are many ways, like what we've just gone on, the whole um, numbering of the, of, of the concept of desolation to the concept of face-to-face. -face. However, this, um, uh, this verse directly relates as well to this concept of face to face through this phrase here Joshua the son of Nun a lad would not depart from the tent okay so it comes to a regular of 1797 300 ordinarily this is very significant by the way very messianic um, you know together they come to 2097 which is 3 times 699 which is 9 times 233. Okay. And where do we get this this phrase from? We get it from Genesis 33, 11, one of the places where it's written about Moshe seeing Yotevave face to face. It says, Then the Lord would speak to Moshe face to face, as a man would speak to his companion, and he would return to the camp. But his attendant, Joshua, the son of Nun, a lad, would not depart from the tent. So we've got this concept of Yoshua that's heavily linked to the concept of Mashiach ben Yosef. Um, but it's also in the context of what we're studying now, this revelation that occurs to Moshe, who is Mashiach, this face-to-face -face revelation that is very symbolic of um, an indirect revelation as opposed to a personal direct revelation that we can receive individually. 
um, of the of a revelation of the name Yod Hey Vav Hey. This is this is Moshe and the Moshiach is a capac- in the capacity of the intermediary, if you like, between that that's finite and that's that's infinite, i.e., between man and Yod Hey Vav Hey. Okay, so the way that that Panim El Panim is spelt in this case indicates that indirect um, face-to-face relationship, whereas Panim Be Panim that is more closely ring- linked to the concept from Sheikh Ben Yosef, Yeshua, is the direct face-to-face relationship that we can all attain through Yeshua to the inner name of Yote Vafe, the most merciful levels of revelation of the name Yote Vafe, that can be accessed, again, through the concept of Mashiach, but that brings us into a direct personal relationship with Yote Vafe. Okay? And that is um, uh, that whole concept is is very much linked to the whole concept of Mashiach and Yosef is very much linked to Yoshua, the son of Nun, and this is highlighted in the book called Hatar that is um, written by Vilna Gowen's disciple, and it's all about the concept of Mashiach and Yosef. So there's lots and lots of connections, endless amounts of connections. The 300, by the way, when I said it's um, very messianic, 300, for w- one reason I'm, go- I'm going to do from memory, um, 300 is two times knaf, and knaf is wing. Okay, so we've got the whole concept of, um, you know, the Mashiach having healing in his wings, um, but we've also got the fact that um, the Mashiach is likened to a wing. You know, and I can't go over this all the time. The right wing of the bird is Mashiach ben David. The left wing of the Mish- of the bird is Mashiach ben Yosef, and the body of the bird is Moshe. Okay, let's go on then. So, very another very significant um, two hundred and thirty-three. So, we we highlight in the two hundred and thirty-three f- in this instance is a tree of life. Eh? It's Hachaim, and um, that goes to two hundred and thirty-three, eighty odd, and another three hundred and thirteen together. And there it's Miss Bagadols and things like that. We're not going to go over that. We're going to just focus on this number. Oops. Um, and then this is highly significant. I'm going to do a drill down on this. Like I've said, the Cherubim and the Blade of the Revolving Sword. So these are what actually prevents access to the Tree of Life. Okay, the Tree of Life is the name yod heh vav Um uh, so we've got we've got we've got an opposition. We've got something that prevents us from accessing that. That's the cherubim and the blade of the revolving sword, and that we're going to have a look at this number eventually, and we're going to drill down further into this concept of the cherubim and the bl- the blade of the revolving sword. Obviously, because we need to know what to do to get access to the tree of life. This is what we're aiming for. Okay. We 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 aim for a face to face relationship with the name Yod Hey which is the tree of life, and we have got things that are in our way. Okay, so we'll go and have a look at this. But as we can see, the regular and the ordinal come to two thousand five hundred sixty-three, and two thousand five hundred sixty-three is eleven times two hundred and thirty-three. So again, we've got this incredible connection. Shall a woman forget her suckling child from having mercy on a child of her womb? Okay, so that comes to 1,556, 2 times 778, um, and a 233 ordinally. Okay, so we've got the ordinal of this. This is a concept of anything to do with forgetfulness is to do with, um, well, it's to do with exile, um, but it's also to do with Yosef. Yosef was the one that was forgotten. Okay, and we've got to get to a place of remembrance. We've got to remember Yod Hey Vav Hey, and in remembering Yod Hey Vav Hey, or in Yod Hey Vav Hey, remembering us, bringing us to a state from a state of forgetfulness, which is really exile. It's really subject to external forces. Forgetfulness is when we're subject to external forces. When we're subject to external forces, we've been subject to fantasy and fiction. We were su- subject to lies and distortion, and we need to get to a place of remembrance because remembrance is very much associated with this whole concept of being face to face. It's it's, a, it's remembrance. Zakira is um, uh, very much associated to w- with redemption as opposed to exile. And so we've got to remove ourselves from a place of forgetfulness where we basically, literally, we've forgotten the name Yote Vave. 
We have literally forgotten the name yod heh vav That's what we've ultimately forgotten. Okay, so Yosef has been forgotten, results in us forgetting the name yod heh vav because in the light of Yosef, we see the light of the name yod heh vav Through the concept of Mishach ben Yosef, we see the light of yod heh vav So if we forget Yosef, we forgot yod heh vav and we're in a state of forgetfulness where we have been forgotten in exile. So it's all those are linked very much. We've got to transition from this place of forgetfulness where we are subject to the force of externality the clip art, the lies, the delusion, the fantasy fiction versions of reality, instead of true reality, which is attachment to the name face to face with your tape affair. So we're in a state of forgetfulness, we've got to we've got to remember. We've got to get to that place of remembrance. Okay, so forgetfulness is very much associated, like I say, with Mashiach Ben Yosef, but this is a temporary um this is a temporary uh, um, state that we're in we will be remembered we will remember your tevafe okay in the blink of an eye you know you're woken up and aroused as soon as your tevafe managed to penetrate through all these forces of exile that hold us in a state of forgetfulness when that light reaches us when that light reaches us and shines for us to see even momentarily it will be it's powerful enough for us to turn our face away from what we are facing all our lack and emptiness all the forces of exile that's what we've got face to face with you know we are staring into the pit of our existence because we have not got attachment to the name yote vave so it's complete what we see is evil what what that's what's before us evil our own lack our own inadequacy, uh, you know, we, we really are in a state where we have forgotten the true reality of the name yod heh vav and you know, when, when we attach to that concept of Mashiach ben Yosef and that light of the name yod heh vav can finally reach us, it's powerful enough for us to turn ourselves away from these very powerful forces that cause us to forget and cause us to be exiled. You know, it, it draws us away from the vanity and emptiness of it all. Because just even a tiny shard of light directly um, reaching us in this place of exile, that illumination to our soul is enough to draw us away from this vanity and e emptiness. And we remember. We remember him. And I'm talking about things I've experienced. It happened to me. You know, this, I had this incredible light. I've talked about it many times in different teachings. I had this incredible light. I knew it was a light that was coming direct from the name Yod Heh Vav. It happened on Shabbat. Um, and it, it just transformed my entire reality. But it took, even though I'd experienced this powerful light, still I was. it was, took me a long time to s turn my head around to face it, it th and outwork that through my life. You know, I was absolutely face to face with all the evil that I'd faced in my life. I was face to face with all the emptiness and vanity that was my life, all my lack. And that was what I was faced with. And even though I'd had this experience and this revelation, it took me a long time to break that influence that this evil had, um, had, had attached to during exile, during whatever I'd been suffering. And it took me a long time to turn round and, and, and to, to turn my face to, to just say, no, there's only your tev This is This is not true reality, Stephanie. Wake up. Stop being motivated by this delusion that's before you turn and remember the, the light that shone for you. And it was all a process. So through Yosef, through, uh, you know, revelation of Mashiach ben Yosef, in truth, I received the truth, a true revelation of the name Yod Heh Vav Heh. The two are, the, the absolutely linked. So I know what I'm talking about. And I'd forgotten. This is what I'm trying to say. I had forgotten. Just how glorious and wonderful Yote Vave was. I just, I had forgotten. I was so overwhelmed by external forces. I had forgotten. I, I couldn't remember him. I'd, I'd lit, I'd literally forgotten him. And I didn't even know that I'd forgotten him. 
You know, that's that that's the power of exile. That's the true power of exile. And I was honestly, it's literally the difference between light and day. Sorry, night and day. You know that moment where the dawn, uh, the, the 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 light of of the dawn start ju just shines even briefly, and you realise, you know, there is a different reality to this chaos and delusion and evil that you're subject to. There is true reality that can overpower it. Um, it's wonderful and it's glorious to remember that. You know, to finally overwhelm all those forces that cause us to forget. So I'm speaking of memory when I say, and all that time that we have forgot, we have forgotten the name Yod Hey Vav Hey, Mashiach Ben Yosef is suffering with us in this state of forgetfulness because the soul of Mashiach is with us in exile, suffering with us. We forget Yod Hey Vav Hey, Yish, um, the soul of Mashiach with us as a consequence of that forgetfulness, where we're subject to. All the forces of externality and, and, and evil that we are facing, and they are overwhelming us and separating us from the name Yod Hey Vav Hey. Mashiach is with us in this suffering. He is forgotten because he is the access that we have been provided for by the name Yod Hey Vav Hey to keep us attached to the name Yod Hey Vav Hey in a face to face relationship. And our sin and our stupidity, and, and sometimes. Uh, you know, the fact that by the will of Yod Hei Vav we are subject to external forces. You know, we are subject to suffering. There's a reason for that. Um, you know, the perfection of the entire of creation occurs two ways. Sometimes through concealment and sometimes through revelation. You know, and my life can vouch for this. I've experienced both. I've, ex I've experienced that, that, that concealment. 100% I've experienced it. It's not nice either. It's suffering. It's suffering. It's truly suffering to be not attached to the name you have have her. This is exile. You know, not to have that light illuminating your soul perpetually. It's suffering. It's suffering. So we need to get out of a state of forgetfulness. Now I'm wobbling on, but I hope you can appreciate remembrance is important. We have to remember your Tevafe. Okay? And it get us out of this exile. It's all via remembrance. And that is why the final redemption is called Zak Zakira remembrance. Okay, we have to remember your Tevafe and turn from this folly and turn from this evil and um you know turn and face be face to face with the true reality of Tevafe. Okay, so lots of other things come to two hundred and thirty three. Firstborn, ha bacho. First fruit, Bechora, on the mountain of Hashem, Bahar Adonai, um, I am the Lord your God, um, Elohim Elohecha Anochi, okay, and the light of Hashem, the light of Hashem, this is what we want, don't we want it to bask in the light of Hashem, is his wonderful, glorious name. There's no other real, there's no, nothing else our soul desires, by the way, there's nothing. Everything is vanity compared to this. Without this, we've with not with nothing, with nothing, not nothing of nothing of any value. We can only be deceived into believing something else could possibly be of value. The only thing our soul desires one hundred percent is the light of Hashem. We don't desire and truly want anything else. If you're in tune with your soul, that's what your soul wants. Don't be distracted by anything else that's going to get you deeper and deeper into an exile that's going to cause you to forget what your soul really truly desires. Your soul desires Hashem 100%. You have Hashem in your life you want for nothing. Okay, so it's this that we desire. And all these wonderful concepts, all these wonderful, powerful concepts, 233, so I hope you can appreciate 233, very significant number. Teaches us a lot. And then we've got Yonah filled. So Yonah is the sign that Mashiach ben Yosef gave. Okay. And these are just fillings out of Yonah. Let's just get to the end of Yonah. So we've got we've got Yonah when Yonah is filled with the Yod to the highest level of filling possible. Okay, not not actually to the highest level because the he is not filled with the Yod. But when the Vav is filled with the Yod, we've got this. Um we've got um all these added up together. So there's Yona 
which is uh, it's not actually on there is it the actual filling out of your the actual name yona yod vav nun he comes to 71 regular the first filling out comes to 158 the second filling out of yona spelt this way comes to 794 together they come to 1023 okay which is three times 341 and then the ordinal of that so the ordinal of yona spelt out yod um yod vav nun he comes to 35 i haven't written yona on i don't know why but anyway uh, i can't do it now uh, maybe i can just wait a minute okay so i'm just going to wrote that on very quickly um so you've got now yona written on which means dove and this is a sign of mashiach well what well what yeshua gave as the only sign to a wicked, wicked and adulterous generation we are wicked and adulterous why because we're serving everything other than yod he vav he. We have forgotten who we should be serving. We are serving all the forces of exile. We're trying to, you know, appease these forces that are causing us um, suffering. We're not serving your Tevav. Uh, but anyway, so they're the ordinals, the 35 from Yona, the 86 from the first spelling out, and the 254 from the second spelling out, come to 375. And together they come to 1,398, which is six times 233. So Yona is incredible revelation regarding the whole concept of Mashiach ben Yosef, which is the light through which we see the light for the name Yotef Afer. Right, this as well. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall exalt and rejoice thereon. So from Psalm 118, which is part of the Hel the Hallel um Psalms, is part of the Hallel um said on all the festivals and the new moon. Um, and um, that comes to 989 this is a highly significant messianic um, tehillim psalm I've gone through some teachings regarding psalm 118 that are absolutely brilliant there's wonderful wonderful revelation to be found in that psalm anyway this particular phrase comes to 989 regularly and an order of 233 Okay, together they come to 1,222, which is 2 times 611, and 611 is Torah. Okay, I've got that written there, look, 2 times Torah. 989 is Bereshith. So we've got Bereshith, the first word of Torah, comes to 913, and it's got an ordinal of 76. Together they come to 989. So this is extremely powerful. Because we know the end is in wedged in the beginning. So we know there's a link here to this concept. 239 is very much related to the concept of Bereshith. The beginning in which we can find also the end. And the end is a revelation of the name Yotefafe. It's redemption. Okay, so, and, and we've already gone through that, right, let's go for a drill down. We said we're going to drill down and, and have a look at this concept here. I think that's what's coming next. Let's have a look. Okay, right, so, hmm, right, so what we're going to do, just let me go back and see where I've got, where I've got this from then. Drill down. Yeah, I think we're going to come to this. Um, can't exactly remember the order of it. All right, now I know we're looking at this number 491 and this is where it gets very exciting with this particular slide. Okay, the numbers in this are unbelievable. So we are going to definitely do a drill down here um, with that phrase about the cherubim, the blade, the, 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 the sword, the um, blade of the revolving sword, etc. So anyway, let's have a look at this. This verse is from Genesis 22, 6, part of the Akeda. It's a total and utter revelation about the concept of Mashiach ben Yosef suffering with his neck. Now, with his name raised, it says, And Avram took the wood for the burnt offering, and he placed it upon his son Isaac, and he took into his hand the fire and the knife, and they both went together. So that comes to 4,036, which is 4 times 109, uh, 1,009, which we're going to go and have a look at that. 688 ordinarily. Um, together they come to 4,827, which is four times 1,181. We will have a look at that. We'll, we'll drill down into that as well. Um, this is where the concept of Yeshu comes in. Is and the two of them went together, and the initial letter spelled Yeshu. 
Okay. Yeshu stands for may his name be erased in his memory. Yemach Shimo Wizikro. Okay. So however we have a look here and he took into his hand the fire and the knife comes to one thousand seven hundred and fifty six and two hundred and eight ordinarily, which is Yitzchak. Okay, two hundred and eight is Yitzchak, the regular of Yitzchak. Together they come to one thousand nine hundred and sixty four, which is two times nine hundred and eighty two and four times nine four hundred and ninety one. Okay, which is the number that we are definitely interested in um, because it's connected to the entire verse about, um, you know, the Mashiach being mad of appearance more than any other man. Okay, so there's a connection. We've also got a connection to this. This is why it's significant. Rabbi Nachman left us a really um, very powerful uh, verse um uh, well, he left us a powerful um, sign with this particular phrase, which is na nach nachma nachman ma'uman. Okay, and this is one of the most famous phrases from within the Breslov movement. That's part of the Hasidic movement that were that came out of the teachings and revelations of Baal Shem Tov. Okay, so that goes to four hundred ninety-one, one hundred and sixty-seven ordinarily. All these are significant, by the way, which is the fortieth prime from one, and. 40 is, um, well, there's all kinds of things, 40 days that, that um, Mashiach was up in heaven, uh, Mashiach Moshe was up in heaven in the 40 days that Yeshua was tested in the wilderness, things like that, um, very significant, letter Mem as well, which is associated with Mashiach. Together they come to 658, 658 is a rectified spelling of the luminaries. Okay, so the luminaries is spelled effective in Torah, when you add the two vavs that are missing from the word, the way the luminaries is spelt, which the luminaries are the sun and the moon, Mashiach ben Yosef and Mashiach ben David, when you rectify that, it comes to 658. However, if you add on the ordinal to that, which is 73, it comes to 731. And 731 is the regular for Moshe, 335, plus Yeshua, 386. The luminaries rectified are a full revelation of the Mashiach, which is unity between Moshe and Yeshua. So this phrase, Nanach, Nachman, Nachman, Ma'umam, is given an indication as to the necessity of the unity between Moshe and Yeshua, just exactly what these teachings are about. We are using the Torah to really illustrate the importance of the unity between Mashiach, Ben Yosef and Moshe, because that unity will bring about a revelation of Mashiach Ben David. It's, that's the only way that we can reveal the soul of Mashiach Ben David. And then hopefully usher in his incarnation um, from that. However, the 491 is Yeshua filling with a vav. So we've got Yeshua the ordinary 53. That's Yeshua spelt out, um, the first filling, 118. That's Yeshua spelt out, the second filling. And that comes to 320, which is the same as Yeshai. And David ben Yeshai comes to 386, which is Yeshua. Okay, if we spell it rectified, so when the David has got a yod, so it's David ben Yishai, it comes to an ordinal of 81. Okay, and um, the ordinal of that is the same as Moshe spelt out to the first filling. I've gone through that a few times and that's one of the indications um, of the unity between Yeshua and Moshe uh, okay through this phrase David ben Yishai okay where where one represents Yeshua and one represents the rectified version represents Moshe but they two need to be united both of them reveal the truth both united together as one they reveal the soul of David ben Yishai okay but anyway, we've got, if we add them all up together, the, the, the ordinal for Yeshua, the ordinal for the first filling out of Yeshua, and the ordinal for the second filling out of Yeshua comes to 491, which is the 95th prime from 1. 95 is Hamalech, the king. What else have we got then? The day God lavishes upon us comes to 358, which is Mashiach. Okay, plus 133, which is the concept of Segula and Sarach Bat Asher. Well, Segula is the name that's given Sarach in Midrash. Sarach is the woman who finds the bones of Yosef with Moshe. So the ordinal of Segula is 98, the regular is 35, which is exactly the same as Yona, the ordinal for Yona. Add them together, comes to 133. 
So 133, very important. Mashiach united with the concept of Segula, the woman who finds the bones of Yosef, it comes to 491. And this is um, Yom Yahamaslanu Ha'el, the day God lavishes upon us. Okay. We want this. We 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 want this. Uh, we want this light to be lavished upon us. We 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 definitely want this, okay. And ha ha el, this word for God el is linked to the concept of kindness, okay. Chesed, segula, the name for Sarachbat Asherim Midrash, is also linked to the vowel pointing. Of, of what's called the Sagol. And the Chesed, loving kindness, um, is the vowel pointings of Chesed, the two Sagols. Um, so we can see that there's a concept of this concept of loving kindness. Um, and this is the name that represents loving kindness. Of the names of God, the one that represents Chesed is El. Okay? So we want a revelation of this kindness. This is basically the kindness of your Tevafe being poured upon us through a revelation of the Mashiach, okay? Through the concept of Segula, who finds the bones of your Mashiach ben Yosef, okay? And who is this Mashiach ben Yosef that is revealed? Yeshua, okay? Yeshua, Yeshua. Uh, it's all glorious and it's all perfect in every way. We've got this here. So, and he took the fire and the knife. Just in case you was wondering what this was all about that came to 491 that was indicated by Rabbi Nachman, uh, that is the filling out of Yeshua to the second filling. Okay, it's 1756. It's two times Mashiach filled out. So Mashiach filled out is 878. Two times that is 1756. So this is all about Mashiach. Okay, and he took the into his hand the fire and the knife. So Mashiach, Mashiach, who is the Mashiach? We yelechu shneim yachdau, and the two of them went together. Yeshu is the Mashiach. It's called Yeshu because this is a Torah. Um, the, this is a Torah concept, and this Torah concept of Yeshu has been distorted within Eruv Rav teachings. It's there, but it's very much distorted because. And it's, the, and it's distorted in the most disgusting way possible. It's distorted to create nothing but hatred towards people who believe that Yeshua is the Mashiach. Uh, and it should really bring love and, and, and unity. When, it's, when the truth is revealed from the lie, so the Erev Rav lives regarding, regarding the concept of Yeshu within rabbinical Judaism is a total and utter delusion and distortion of a glorious, glorious, glorious truth that, that Yod Hev did to bring about the perfection of creation that all creation will be able to ultimately enjoy, to be near his name, okay? So it's a glorious concept. Nothing that Yod Hev did is anything other than glorious. He can't do anything other than good. He can't do anything other than glorious. He can't do anything other than wonderful. Every single thing that he did in creation is only good, only glorious, only wondrous. You know, yet we in our follies seem to be able to believe rubbish and delays and delusion that don't really reflect, reflect that truth. But when we mature and when we break free from these exilic mindsets that really do, we've inherited, and when we do access true reality, which is all the concepts of Mashiach to be found within the Torah and, and through the concept of Mashiach, to have the glory of his name revealed to us, to illuminate our soul with his true glory. It's just wonderful. It's, it's wonderful. So, yes, there is this concept of Yeshu within Jude, Rabbi Nicol Junez, and there's no truth in it other than, well, I'm sorry to say there's no truth in it. There's so, certainly no truth in the way that it's presented at this time in rabbinical Judaism, but you scratch below the surface and reveal, you link that up to the truth as revealed in the mind of God, which is um, the Torah, 
um, and you know it's a completely different perspective. It's a glorious perspective. It's, it's you turned full circle. You you, you you turned away from those lies towards the truth, and suddenly this concept of Yeshu, which is really horrible and nasty, and it's like Yeshu boiling in a pot of excrement. Um, it's it's not something that's going to bring about revelation of the name Yod Hey Vav Hey, but the truth. Of the concept of Yeshu does. It, it brings out a revelation of the glory of Yod Hevavi, what he's been doing for these last 2,000 years, you know, to bring about um, a revelation of his perfection and oneness for all humanity and all creation to benefit from. Okay, so we've got this 208 up here, and he took the fire and, and the knife. We know that's related very much to the concept of Mashiach. Why? Because of this number here, we've just gone through it. Two times 878 filling out of Mashiach. Who has descended into heaven and dis Who has ascended into heaven and descended? We point this out all the time. Um, it comes 153 ordinarily, which, by the way, is the triangular number for 17. And I think it is 9 times 17. Just wait a minute. Yes, it is. 153 is 9 times 17. Okay, that's the ordinal of who has ascended into heaven and descended. Who has ascended into heaven and descended? Moshiach has ascended into heaven and descended. Both Moshe and both Yeshua ascended into heaven and descended. So comes 153. 153 is the life of Moshe, Moshe 120, plus the life of Yeshua, 33. Together they come to 153. Okay, we, I've pointed this out loads of times. The regular 765 is really very, that's very much related to Moshe. Um, okay, but it's also 153 times 5. Okay, so it's the 153 rectified. And we know that this is a sign that Yeshua gave because it's the 153 fishes in the dragnet. Um, he was really given, uh, he was given a, a code to say, I'm going down into exile. And when the time is right, I would be need I would be in need of redeeming from there. He was telling his true disciples. He appeared to his disciples, um, and he left this message. And they didn't even recognize him at first. And then they recognized that he was indeed uh, Yeshua. Um, he'd come in some other form that they were, wasn't used to. Uh, maybe incarnated into another body. I can't say for definite, but they certainly didn't recognize him. And then they recognized him once he started speaking. Um, but it was obviously giving him a clue that he was going down into exile, the Edomite exile, and he left him this clue, 153, and it points here, who was ascended into heaven and descended. The order of that is 153. The regular of it is five times 153. That's rectified. He had to ascend, and he ascended into heaven, and then he descended again into Edomite exile. And um, this is a concept of Mashiach suffering with us in exile. So that links up Yeshua and Moshe together. The initial letter spelled me Esav. So we know Esav is really synonymous with the Edomite exile. We've, he's descended into the nations. He's descended into the evil inclination. He's descended into, um, you know, the body, if you like. It's like Yonah in, in the body of the whale. You know, this is a whole concept. He's descended into that, you know, and so overwhelm it. How is he overwhelming it? In our lives. He reaches us in our state of exile. And through that revelation, through that illumination of our soul, we are able to overpower some of the forces of evil in our own lives, individually. So he's overwhelming Esau and doing him to the side of Shalom in order, in, in order to create a vessel that is able to fill with the light that you have ever desired to bestow upon us. Okay, so go over this concept a lot. May Esif comes to 416, which is two times Yitzchak. So we can see the whole concept of Mashiach ben Yosef is very much related to the concept of Yitzchak. We can see that numerically, it's, it's, it's utter perfection. So this is two times Yitzchak, uh, this is two times Moshiach. So we can see the related. The ordinal of Me'esav, the initial letter, comes 56, which is the same ordinal as Teshuvah. We are in the process of returning. We're returning to a state, the status that we had in Gan Eden. And then from there, we'll even go higher. Um, together, they come to 472, which is 4 times 118, which is this spelling out of Yeshua. So we know that this is connected to Yeshua. And through this number, I ain't got time to go through it today, but that is connected very much to Moshe. Um... Okay, uh, we've got another 418, crush your, this is refer referring to the Mashiach, will crush your head, i.e. the head of the serpent, 
and he will bite your heel. And the word for Krushya is Yeshuv Kho. Um, these three initial, these three middle letters spell um, add up to Yeshua. And the word for um, he will bite your heel also contains these three middle letters. Okay, and I've done teachings about this before. If you go and look, have a look at the videos which contain, they've got like a picture of um, a foot crushing a serpent, crush your head in the title. Uh, it's really interesting, the fact that this curse, um, what it reveals about the concept of Mashiach is very fascinating. You know, because when we've got an unrectified fantasy fiction version of Mashiach, like what we found like what we find in rabbinical Judaism regarding Yeshu and the whole concept of Jesus within Christianity, this all attached to paganism and idol worship, and also within Islam, this whole concept of Jesus being a Muslim. And, you know, these the, fantasy fiction versions of reality, that, our fantasy fir, fiction version, by its source, it's a serpent. It's not the truth. You know, the, the gematria for a serpent is the same as gematria from Nechash. Uh, sorry, the same as gematria. The serpent the, is called Nechash. Okay, it's got a 358 gematria. The gematria from Mashiach is 358. If we don't have the right concept of Yeshua, if we don't have the right concept of, of all the concepts of Mashiach ben Yosef, Yeshu, Yeshua, salvation, all these concepts, the the Mashiach of Yote Vafe, the unity between the concept of the Mashiach Yode, of Yote Vafe, i.e. between Moshe and Yeshua, if we don't have the truth, we will have some lie and delusion there instead. The only way we can access the truth is through the Torah. To truly analyze the Torah, this will reveal the Mashiach of Yote Vave. Once we've got the truth regarding Mashiach of Yote Vave, this is what crushes the head of the serpent. Okay, and so we've got the cr truth, we'd be bitten by the serpent, the false Messiah, the delusion and the lies will bite us. This concept of Yeshu within rabbinical Judaism has caused nothing but division and hatred and, and, and really. Uh, the opinion of some Jewish people towards Christians is like, you can't even imagine. You can't even imagine. It just gives them one foul excuse. Because they see Christians through this delusion. They don't see Yote Vav and what he's been doing within the lives of Christianity. What he's actually trying to accomplish to rectify Esav. And the glory that's involved in all that, and the meticulous way in which Yodhe Vavi has been operating, so they just turn their noses up like they're, they're some, somehow superior, clinging to this concept, which is utter and absolute lies and delusion. Okay, but anyway, that and it bites, and it bites, and they think that it's the Christians that are biting them. Yeah, what's biting them is their own delusion that's creating um, separation that's creating hatred, that's creating division. The true concept of Mashiach brings unity, okay? You crush you crush the forces of the serpent with the true concept of Mashiach. And when we get there, and we are getting there, uh, we will see just how defeat, easily defeated he is. The Torah is the, the, Torah, the ne is the name of your Tevafe. If your Torah is not revealing the glory, the, if you cannot see the glory of your Tevave when you're looking out at any aspect of creation, you've got something false there instead. Okay? You are in error. You need to deal with the error so the error is going to bite you because it will raise its ugly head. It's empowered to bite you. Where does it bite? It bites your heel. Synonymous with Mashiach. Concept of Mashiach. Without the concept of Mashiach, we have no. We have um, a, usually a mixture. We've usually a mixture of influence. We've got some truth regarding Mashiach and some lies. The lie side of it will bite us. <laughs> uh, it will bite our heel. It will literally bite the concept of Mashiach. Uh, that we need in order to access the name Yote Vafe. So we will we will not be able to fully access the name Yote Vafe. And it will be the lies that we have got regarding Mashiach that prevents that. Okay. 
So we've got this here. This is a wonderful, wonderful number. Wonderful, wonderful number. It's so perfect how it is part of this verse. Because whenever the ark set out, Moshe would say, Arise, 1009. So we can see that it's linked to this. This is four times 1009. It's got 172 ordinal. Extremely, extremely, extremely significant. And they come to 1181. So we can see this verse here. Whenever the ark set out, Moshe would say, Arise. One, we've got a link up here. But we've also got that this, 172, is also linked to the ordinal. Um, I think it's four times 172. Let me just check because it's early in the morning and I need to do, I need to use my calculator for this. Yeah, four times 172 is um, 688. So that is why this 1181 is exactly the same well four times that is exactly the same as the ordinal plus the regular so we can see very clearly that there is a very powerful connection between this verse and Moshe okay so this is the concept of Mashiach ben Yosef and this is a concept of Mashiach whenever the ark set out Moshe would say okay and this here the initial letters um the spell arise um kuma um the spell arise and they also spell mikvah and mikvah is the way that we are able to erase the doubt regarding the concept of mashiach ben yosef um we have his name erased by the way this is his name erased we, what we've got to do is transform the erasing of the name of mashiach ben yosef we've got to erase Amalek erase the doubt that is preventing us from accessing the truth regarding Mashiach ben Yosef. Um, and that's why um, there's a concept of the Leverite marriage. We just read it um, in the Torah. The concept of the Leverite marriage is in the, exactly the same parasha. It's, in, it's actually in the same, it, it's in the seventh portion, um, I do believe. Yeah. Um, you've got this concept of, um, just wait a minute, I'm just trying to find it now. It says, it shall be the firstborn, Habachor, which comes to 233, doesn't it? We've just pointed that out. Habachor, just let me just check. 200, um, 233 yeah so the firstborn it shall be that the firstborn that's the 233 that we've just been looking at we spent all that page looking at it that she shall bear shall succeed to the name of his father's brothers who died so that blotted out shall his name so, so, so that not blotted out shall his name be from israel so this is very much connected to the concept of mashiach ben yosef this phrase is um well um i can't go through it today but that whole concept of the levirate marriage is very much related so we've got this don't erase his name um, and also I wanted to point out, I'm going to do a teaching on this at some point, but Ruth was married via Leverite marriage. Okay, she gave birth to Mashiach ultimately. She was the grand, great-grandmother of Mashiach, David. Okay, so this whole concept of, we've got a big indication through Ruth um, of a connection to the concept of Mashiach and the concept of Leverite marriage and when you look at the verses for Leverite marriage that ref that reveals the truth regarding the concept of Mashiach ben Yosef okay, and not erasing his name so you've got this word Yimacha Shemo blotted out or erased so you're told not to erase his name and, and yet you're told to erase the same verb is used to the for the last verse in and the parasha kesetsa so this is in this is all in the seventh alia um of the torah portion parasha kesetsa or kitetsa okay the very last word in that parasha is um you know it's it's the command to erase the name of amalek 
we're supposed to erase doubt. We're supposed to erase doubt, not the name of Yeshua, who is the Mashiach. And the, and the word, um, you know, Yemacha Shemo. So if you take the letters Yod, Mem, Chet, He, and Shin um, from Yemacha Shemo, they spell the Mashiach. Okay? So we know there's a connection to the concept of Mashiach. But we're not, he's not, we're not supposed to raise the name of the Mashiach. Let's get this right. We're supposed to raise Amalek. Um, but unfortunately, Amalek is the force that we need to erase, not the concept of Mashiach ben Yosef, which we need in order to to, to bring us to a face-to-face -face relationship with the name yod heh vav -Heh. And, and this word mikvah, um, that word to erase the memory of Amalek, um, tim -che, which, like I say, is very much like do not erase the, his name from Israel, talking about the Leverite marriage, the Yibom marriage, I think it's called, um, that um, Tim Khe, it comes to 453, which is three times Mikvah and three times Kuma. So if we want to fulfill, fulfill this, we need to erase Amalek through the power of the Mikvah. Okay, and also this concept of kuma arise. And Vilna Gohan said, this word here, the verb, whenever you see the verb kuma, it is always about Mashiach ben Yosef because it says, my sheaf arose. Okay, my sheaf arose. Okay, and all the other sheaves bowed down to that sheaf. So that's just a little bit of a distraction that I've gone through. Didn't I expect to be talking about that, but it's only because I read it and I read it at the weekend. And I've you I've used that phrase and do not erase his name a lot. Um, but I, I just met, I, I thought to myself when I was reading it this Shabbat, which has just gone. Um, we've we've just read um, Parashaki Tetz. I thought that's that's incredible that you've got those two concepts together. We should be erasing Amalek, not the name of Yeshua. Okay, that's the point that I wanted to make. And this word here, this here, um, is Hasatan. Um, this is a gematria for Hasatan. Um, Anyway, it's Mashiach spelled out in full, by the way. First of all, it's Mashiach. We've already got a connection to the concept of Mashiach here through this. Now we're going to get another one because we can see that this is four times the concept of Mashiach, which links us into this concept, which links us into all that that I've just spoken about. Not only that, the 131 times 3 comes to 393. And this is the whole concept of Shiloh. I've gone over that many, many times. Shiloh is the umbrella term for all the concepts of Mashiach united as one. Okay, however, my Satan, here we go. Satan, this is the Miss Pagadol of Satan, comes to 1009. Okay, so there's always going to be opposite Mashiach, this Satan. False Mashiach. Mashiach. Lies and delusion. This is the serpent that uh, we crush his head and he bites our heel when we when we don't when we don't erase the doubts when we don't erase the lies and we and we stand in a place of accusation as well. This is a very important thing that we've got to understand. It's very easy to stand in accusation that all the time that we do, we impact, we're working for Hasatan. When we are accusing the Jews, or we are accusing the Christians, or we are accusing the Muslims of evil, okay, we are their accuser. We are doing the role of Hasatan. What we've got to do is advocate for the name yod heh when we When we see yod heh and everything he's been doing, and the glorious way that he has been working, we become advocates for the whole of humanity because we just see it's just your your devafe. You know, we just see the truth, the true reality, so we can start to advocate. Yeah, obviously, you know, um, that we've got to point out the things that are wrong. <laughs> we've got to point out the lies and the delusions. Okay, but we've got to point them out. We've not got to point out. We've got to start accusing humanity. We've we have been placed in exile. Okay, it's not it wasn't our will to be placed there, it was the will of your Tevafe. And it was his um it it is his way 
that he has chose and designed in order to reveal his utter absolute authority and perfection so we can we have to start to be advocates for humanity not accusers not look at how evil they are look at all their idolatry and look at all their lies you know yeah we've got to point out that we are in exile and ex what does exile look like well it will actually looks like uh you know f lies <laughs> we we it looks it looks like we believe a lot of lies and we think that we're better than everybody else because we don't realize that it's lies that we're clinging to we just see the lies in the area and other people we've got to start to advocate we've got to stop accusing so we've got to start seeing the good that yodhe vave has been done doing within christianity the good yodhe vave has been doing within judaism and the good that Yod Hevav has been doing in, in Israel, uh, in, in Islam, and all throughout the world, through this exile that we've been suffering in. What is the good that has been accomplished through it? Because when we start to advocate for what Yod Hevav is doing, instead of what Hasatan is doing, in what we see other people, you know, when, when, we, when we're looking at other people and just seeing their delusions and lies, and we become accusers of that that we see, Rather than seeing through that what the light that's hidden in that, what your day of is being accomplishing in this exile in a hidden way, um, you know, we can defeat Hasatan or to reveal the Mashiach. Okay, so we when we see when we can see revealed in the Torah the concept of Yeshu, yeah, we've got to point out that there's an erroneous um there's an erroneous um doctrine regarding Erev Rav doctrine regarding the concept of Yeshu within rabbinical Judaism is a complete total lie as a consequence of that are very harsh there's no way of doing it but then we've got to go to the next level and say yes but Yod Hev Avi willed that this happen for a reason that is ultimately good and only God because he's given us the opportunity to battle against these forces of Amalek He's given us a work to do to erase them and he's empowered and instructed us how to do that and it's ultimately all to his glory because when we put into practice all the advice and guidance that he's given us, this glorifies his name. We're defeating Satan. We're becoming advocates, advocates for the whole of humanity, for the sake of his name to be revealed. Because we don't want to stand there accusing everybody and revealing the power of Satan in the world. We, we're sick of that. We, we realise that the, that's, he's just a servant. He's just there until we get our act together and start doing what Yodhe Vafe has instructed us to do in truth that's revealed within the Torah. When we start, get, start to get our act together and stop erasing the name of Mashiach and start erasing Amalek, the doubt surrounding the concept of Mashiach ben Yosef, you know, we will get to a place of wonderful revelation of the Mashiach and in that light we will see the light of Yodhe Vafe. It's all glorious. Um, sit in the dusk, this is from PKV 1.4, 895 plus 112, 112 is very significant because it's um, the unity of the name yod heh vav and Elohim and it's also until Shiloh comes, it comes to 112, until Shiloh comes is the entire unified concept of Mashiach ben Yosef, sorry the entire unified concept of Mashiach is in the name Shiloh and Shiloh um, that the 393 is the regular of Shiloh, 345, which is exactly the same as Moisha, and the ordinal, which is 48, which is exactly the same as the ordinal of Yosef. So again, we've got Moisha and Yosef <laughs> united as one, and also 48 is 2 times Dawid, rectified 2 times 24. And there's also all other concepts regarding Mashiach and this 293, very significant number. Okay, so until Shiloh comes is 112. That comes to 1007. Two kalal for each word. So two kalal for um, each one of these words. Sit in the dust comes to 1009. Okay, so we have to learn. We have to learn. Sit in the dust, it means we've got to really humble ourselves to learn, um, you know, to, to learn the truth, to learn the Torah in a very kosher and holy way okay to, 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 to learn from the sages this is for part of Pekit Avot we've got to sit in the dust of the, the rabbis so to speak 
and um, in a very humble way, not in a very arrogant way, not in a very Erif Raf way, or not in a very Edomite way, or not in a very Ishmaelite mindset way, in humility, in humility. We ought to sit and learn in humility. When we do, we've got the power to reveal the Moshiach and defeat our Satan and cause the whole concept of um, Moshiach to be revealed. And through that, we will see the light of the name yod Okay. We've also got this look. Chochmat HaEmeth, the wisdom of truth, comes to 914 plus 95, which is Hamalech. I think we've come across Hamalech. Yes, we have. Here you look. Um, 491 is the 95th prime um, so together they come to 1009 the wisdom of truth this is the power to defeat Hasatan because Hasatan is a liar he's a, he's a, he's a liar and accuser We've no, there's no, he has no reason to accuse he's only, he's, he can only accuse because of the lies there's nothing else to accuse that he can't, the truth is there's nothing to accuse there's nothing to actually accuse it's all part of a perfect plan um, the truth is the name yod heh vav there, there, there's nothing to accuse you yod heh vav of because it's all his will so ultimately there's, 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 there's nothing to accuse the wisdom of truth will reveal that and defeat that the, we, we, we are deluded into accusing and it's all lies it's all based on lies. When we have the truth revealed, there's no, it does no, there's no way, there's no way you can accuse because you realise it's all your day of and it's all good. There's all purpose in it. There's all meaning. It's all a, a part of a, a of a wonderful plan to reveal His glorious name. So there's no more. The the wisdom of truth will 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 um, help us to understand that. Okay, so nine hundred fourteen is nine hundred thirteen plus a kalal. Okay, 913 is Barashith. Okay, the regular of Barashith in the beginning. So we see it's connected to that. Okay, I was going to do another drill down really into this. Ugh, there's so much we can go over. This is unbelievable. I'm going to leave it for another lesson. I will come back to this, however, because obviously we've... Um, we want, we, want to, we want to drill down to this as much as we possibly can and um, take it as far as we can because we need the power of truth from the Torah to break all the delusion that's held us bound and in exile in a place where we've forgotten the name yod heh and we, do, we, we spend a long time remembering Hasatan and we sent, spend a lot of our lives accusing others of doing other th th things um, that are supposedly evil um, when in fact the only true reality is your day of Ave has been doing something so ultimately and wonderfully glorious um, we, we need to catch sight of this this is going to take us from that place where we've forgotten him to a place where we remember him anyway I wanted to go further but I haven't had a chance to go further but with that I will say shalom